One of the celebrations of the sesquicentennial at Spring Arbor University. Joining us, Assistant Professor of Studio Art and Director of the Ganton Art Gallery, Brianne Witt, and uh, Librarian and Director of Library Services, Robbie Bolton. Good to see you guys. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Happy 150th. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We, we haven't aged at all. No, you look great. You look great. So the um, big sesquicentennial uh, capping the year long was a week or so ago. Great event. Yeah. But we still are celebrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Homecoming is uh, a week from this Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday, September 30th. A lot of uh, kind of wrapping up the 150th anniversary celebrations on campus. Awesome. We've got one more uh, big thing and that's happening at your Gantton Art Gallery. Yep. What is it? Uh, so um, it is the Spring Arbor University uh, Campus History Exhibition, and it's really based off of the book that Robbie Bolton and Susan Panic uh, researched, developed. I mean, it's all of their hard work being put on display, um, really celebrating the 150 years that Spring Arbor University has been around. And Robbie, they showed images from your book at the Sesquicentennial Gala, and the audience was riveted. Uh, it was a great video, but really a lot of, it's awesome that you have so much history and it's been preserved. Yeah, and that's a lot of credit due to Susan, who's not here, the co-author of the mm -hmm. book. Um, uh, but we're excited that people are interested in it, and we're hoping a number of people will show up for our very brief gallery talk on <laughs> September 30th at one o'clock in the Gantt Art Gallery. There will be refreshments, and, uh, and then people will get a chance to experience the exhibit. We're excited because we are able to include some artifacts from the archives and objects that we could not put in the book uh, that just didn't capture well as a photo. Um, we have chairs from the auditorium from when it was built 80 years ago and then remodeled, I think, two decades ago. We have some of those original chairs. Uh, we have some baseball jerseys kind of spanning the college and the university history. So we've got those on display and uh, some other objects and artifacts <laughs> like that. What, what is the oldest uh, item that you have? Is there anything that is actually 150 years old? Um, Susan's watching right now and she'll probably fact check me. I don't know that there's anything 150 years old on display. We do have some diaries or journal entries from the 1800s, um, so pretty we close. Have a graduation dress, and I apologize, I'm not going to remember um, the name of the woman who wore it, but we have a graduation dress and her diploma from going oh. to Spring Arbor as well, which is really cool to see. They were huge. The diplomas at the time. Yeah. So. It, it wasn't Spring Arbor University, obviously, when it started. It Spring was. Arbor Seminary back yeah. then, which was a grade school and high school. Mm -hmm. um, so that was uh, she was a graduate of the high Spring Arbor Seminary, which was K through 12. Yeah. And it has had a handful of names over the years. Spring Arbor Seminary, Spring Arbor Seminary in junior college, then Spring Arbor Junior College, Spring Arbor College, and now <laughs> Spring Arbor University. And wasn't Spring Arbor High School part of the name at one point too? Yeah, I think. I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I remember in the, some of the photos it was, I think uh, it was listed as Spring Arbor High School and uh, College and then Spring Arbor College and High School. It wasn't that, it was kind of fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a number of name changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So are, are people doing anything, like the, this year, are they creating anything that is going to um, be a future artifact uh, of the history of the university? We hope so. As part of the exhibit, uh, we asked Brianne if we could, we had a big empty wall. We said, do you have any ideas for what we could put here? We've got all this material, but there's a big wall here with nothing in the gallery. And you had an idea to kind of make 150, I don't know, call it piece or work? Installation, I would say. Yeah. Um, I hand painted these old coasters that used to belong to the communication and marketing department at Spring Arbor. Uh, university about mm, 400 coasters maybe um, <laughs> and so hand painted installed on the back wall and it's meant to be a growing piece so when you go into the gallery space there's uh, small yellow paper circles that you write maybe a favorite memory of Spring Arbor University or something you like about the university mm -hmm. or even Spring Arbor community um, maybe someone who's influenced you who's part of the Spring Arbor community 
Um, and it's meant to be put up on the wall with the 150 years as just this growing piece as Spring Arbor continues to grow. And it's going to be permanently there, or no? We'll no. we'll we'll end up moving it probably somewhere else, but I imagine we'll be utilizing it in another. Is it space. a standalone piece that can be taken down, <laughs> or is it in? Is you know each individual yeah. coaster is right now they are individually hung up, <laughs> um, mostly because I don't think I thought through very well on when I painted it and then transported it, so I had to do it individually. You're gonna have to cut the wall out, <laughs> <laughs> like a Banksy, you know? Yeah, yeah. take the wall, sell it, <laughs> and. It's amazing when you uh, look at the progression that you didn't paint the coasters ahead of time, you painted them after they were mounted. Uh, no, 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 I painted them all ahead of time. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, go, let's go back because I don't believe you. That was you. all on my living room floor. <laughs> all right, so that's the finished piece. Yes. And then before that, no, yeah, you see on the see, sheet. See my lovely the toes right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is, uh, it's on the ground. Yeah. I see. I thought it was on the wall. No, no, no. So okay. yeah, I again, the transportation was not fully thought through when I was painting this. Um, so you painted the it on the ground, and then the you ground. put each piece up, mounted each piece individually yeah. on the wall. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. I know. <laughs> I, I just love that you repurposed uh, posters that were made about 20 years ago. They, uh, they were kind of a joke within our uh, communication and arts department. Um, and so I wanted to utilize them yeah. um, and put them to you. So. That's cool. Can, Robbie, can I hold the book up so I can show our viewers? Because this is uh, still available. Mm -hmm. And everyone that has a connection to Spring Arbor University, I think would want to have one. Spring Arbor University or even just the Spring Arbor community. Yep. There's yeah. a number of community photos and images and memories we try to capture. And this um, book will also be the subject of an author talk at the gallery opening. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, in the, on September 30th, Saturday, September 30th at 1 p.m. Brief gallery talk. We were told to keep it short so people have time to spend in the gallery and the exhibit and enjoy the refreshments. Yeah, because there's a lot of other activities going on that same day all over campus, so. Yeah, a related activity on Homecoming Day is they're um, cementing a 150th uh, historical marker celebrating the 150th anniversary. I think the Jackson Historical Association is involved in that. That's right, I just saw a, a note about that. Come, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're, it's the latest uh, Jackson, Michigan Historical Society mm -hmm. marker. Uh, going to be installed at the same time not at the same time i think that's earlier in the day okay same yeah. day same day same day when when's homecoming saturday september 30th a week from this saturday oh my gosh the whole campus will just be it's going to be an awesome time it's going to be a great is, day there's a lot is. of events going on yeah hopefully it's sunny <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the artifacts that um you mentioned the baseball that um you didn't know you had that turned up when you appealed for for history. Yeah, some uh, some things as we were working on the on this book project, some things came in even at the last minute right before our final proofs were due and we were able to include a couple photos and images. Other things came in, uh, there's a, a very large quilt, a red work quilt, mm -hmm. which I don't know a lot about quilting, but I think there's some red work is unique as far as quilting goes, mm -hmm. um, that it has a connection to the history of the university, that's on display. Mm -hmm. um, we received, uh, after the book was published, um, a package with pe pennants, um, or let letters from like the early high school years. Yeah, var varsity. Um, varsity letters, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, those are on display, I think from the 1930s is the earliest one. Uh, so excited to have those displayed. When this university started as a seminary, I'm sure the founder, uh, Reverend Hart, never imagined that there would be 150 years uh, of, of future. So people probably didn't hang on to stuff. There wasn't, they didn't, have the significance of history when, when things got started. Yeah, a lot of people have been reaching out to us since the book came out in May, um, saying, hey, I saw the book, I've got these photos, mm -hmm. or I've got this from my relative, uh, and they're asking if we'll take those. So that's exciting to get some of those materials that we probably would not have gotten otherwise. Well, I'm anxious to see the exhibit as well, and to see your installation in person, <laughs> and also the book talk with uh, Robbie and Susan coming up next week. Thanks for coming in today. Yeah, thanks it's for having us. good to be us. here. Uh, Robbie Bolton and Brianne Witt from Spring Arbor University. Next, we're going to check